Hello, I'm Lisa Fornicoya with Belmont Instrument Corporation. The Belmont Rapid Infuser is a self-contained fluid management system that can literally prevent your patient from bleeding to death. Common applications include liver transplantation surgery, vascular surgery, transplant surgery, complicated obstetrical cases, aneurysm repairs, and trauma. There are two main components of the Belmont, the control system and the disposable set. First, mount the unit, the control system, on an IV pole. Remember to install the collar on the IV pole just beneath the system, no higher than 30 inches from the base of the IV pole. This will prevent the pole from tipping over. When removing the control system from the pole, be sure to hold the handle of the unit when you release the pole clamp to prevent damage from falling. The single patient use disposable comes pre-assembled in a sterile container. Use aseptic technique when setting up and operating the system. Begin by opening the disposable package and tightening the lure locks. Snap the reservoir chamber into the holder and open the door of the unit. Insert the heat exchanger with the red arrow pointing up, matching the red tinted tubing to the red stripe on the unit. This super efficient electromagnetic induction heat exchanger can heat to normal thermic temperatures in a single pass. Behind the two horizontal black bands are temperature sensors. The lower one detects incoming fluid temperature and the upper one displays the real temperature of the infusate on the display screen. Next, fit the interlock block into place with the arrow facing the ultrasonic air detector. Thread the wider tubing over the center of the roller heads. Make sure the wide tubing is in the groove of the wider blue line and the smaller tubing is in the groove of the thinner blue line. Avoid stretching, kinking, or cross-threading the tubing. Now place the pressure tubing into the pressure chamber well. Firmly insert the wider infused line into the air detector and to the left of the patient safety valve wand. Place the thinner recirculation line to the right of the air detector and to the right of the valve wand. The pressure sensor ensures safe infusion and alerts the user when there is a clamp on the line or a kinked cannula. Close and latch the door. Make certain the pump tubing is not caught. An optional large volume reservoir can be added at the beginning of the procedure or at any time a larger volume reservoir is needed. It holds up to 3 liters of fluid and has 5 fluid spikes. The advantage of the large reservoir is it can be used to recreate whole blood providing a consistent fluid mixture. For instance, many liver transplantation centers will use the ratio of one unit of packed red blood cells to one unit of fresh frozen plasma to 250 milliliters of crystalloid solution. This cocktail maintains a hematocrit of approximately 28%, preventing fluctuation in red blood cell and coagulation factor levels. The reservoir can be added in less than one minute. To install the large volume reservoir, attach the large reservoir holder. Unpack the reservoir and place it in the holder. Disconnect the small reservoir by unscrewing the lure fitting on the recirculation line. If the small reservoir contains fluid, slide the blue slide clamp to prevent a spill before disconnecting the fluid line. Disconnect the fluid line by pressing the quick release tab while separating the fluid tubing. Attach the fluid spikes to the filtered ports on the top of the reservoir. Attach the large volume reservoir by connecting the fluid line and snapping the tubing together. Screw the recirculation line into place. An optional dual patient line is also available. It is useful when infusion rate is limited by high system pressure due to less than optimal catheter availability. Using two catheters instead of one can help alleviate the increased pressure and allow higher infusion rates to be used. When using two lines, be careful to ensure both lines are being used to avoid clotting within either catheter. To use, simply disconnect the single patient line and connect the dual patient line before priming. The disposable is now installed and the system is ready to go. After the first few times, you'll be able to get the system up and running in less than one minute. Remember to use only anticoagulated blood products. Do not mix lactated ringers or other solutions containing calcium or dextrose with citrated blood products. 
Compatible fluids include packed red blood cells, fresh frozen plasma, non-calcium containing electrolyte solutions such as plasmalite A and normazole, albumin, and hespan. Platelets and cryoprecipitate should not be infused through the system. Turn on the system by switching the power button to the on position. After a brief self-test, operational instructions are displayed on the screen. The first screen instructs you to connect the fluid bags, unclamp lines, and press prime to begin. The roller pump will automatically prime the system in about 13 seconds. Fluid is drawn through the tubing while the air is directed out through the recirculation or vent line. During prime, the 100 milliliters to go will count down to zero. If it does not count down or resets back to 100 milliliters, make sure there is enough fluid in the system and that the tubing is not stretched too tight. Catheter size and length, extension tubing and stopcocks influence infusion rates. 12 gauge and larger catheters support the Belmont's maximum infusion rate of 750 milliliters per minute. If extension tubing or stopcocks are used, make sure that they can support high flow rates. The next screen prompts you to purge air from the patient line. Press the patient line prime key once to prime at 50 milliliters per minute. Press and hold to prime at 200 milliliters per minute. Press stop after you have confirmed all air has been purged from the patient line. The system automatically enters a standby mode until you are ready to connect to the patient's catheter. Before continuing, please inspect and make certain that the patient line is completely primed and free of air. Any air bubbles after the patient safety valve wand must be removed before the procedure can safely continue. Once the system is connected to the patient, press Infuse to begin operation. Infusion will automatically start at 10 milliliters per minute. The infusion rate, total volume infused, temperature of the fluid being infused, and the pressure within the system are continuously displayed on the display panel. Press the up arrow to increase the infusion rate. Press and hold to change the rate quickly. Press the down arrow to decrease the infusion rate. Note, at the infusion rate of 2.5 and 5 milliliters per minute, the fluids are not heated. At these low infusion rates, the fluids will cool before reaching the patient. Pressing the bolus key will deliver a specific volume of fluid. The volume delivered is displayed on the lower half of the bolus key until the bolus operation is complete. The default infusion rate for the bolus infusion is 200 milliliters per minute. To change the infusion rate, simply press the up arrow to increase the rate or the down arrow to decrease the rate. If you would like the bolus to be delivered at 500 milliliters per minute, simply press the bolus key and then press the 500 milliliter per minute rate key. The bolus setting is adjustable from 100 milliliters to 500 milliliters in 50 milliliter increments. To change the bolus setting, press stop and then press and hold the bolus key. The new setting value will be displayed in the volume section of the display screen. The value will scroll. Release the button when you reach the desired setting. Pressing the recirculation key will recirculate fluid through the reservoir and disposable circuit. It is used to warm and mix fluids. Recirculation pumps fluids at 200 milliliters per minute and will automatically stop after 5 minutes. As fluids are warmed, gases are formed. The Belmont Rapid Infuser will trap these gases within the system and automatically purge them out to the atmosphere. When this occurs, removing air will be displayed on the screen and you may see bubbles escape through the recirculation or vent line. Press stop to stop the pump at any time. At the end of the procedure, make sure to disconnect from the patient and power down by turning off the power switch, not by unplugging the system from the power source. Unplugging the system will cause it to go into battery operation, and if left on, the battery will discharge completely. If this does happen, just turn the switch off, plug the unit in, and wait 30 seconds before powering up again. The Belmont Rapid Infuser will sound an alarm if it senses a problem. In that case, it automatically stops pumping and heating, 
moves the patient safety valve into the recirculation position, closing off the patient line, displays an alarm message, and provides instructions for corrective measures and sounds an audible alarm. To silence the alarm and return to normal operation, simply follow the instructions on the display screen. An out of fluid alarm will occur if the operator allows the system to run out of fluid. Press mute to silence the alarm, add fluids, and press reprime. The system will automatically reprime in 13 seconds. If the fluid bags are not empty, check that the bags are open and spiked and the tubing is installed correctly. High amounts of particulates in the blood may clog the coarse blood filter in the reservoir chamber. Replace the reservoir chamber or disposable if it is clogged. The air detection alarm will be triggered if air is in the line. The air detector sensor is not firmly seated, there is a leak in the disposable, or if the air detector sensor is dirty. First, open the door to silence the alarm. Check for air bubbles or leaks. Squeeze the tubing directly below the air detector to clear any trapped air out of the sensor. Check the air detector and make sure that it is clean and nothing is obstructing the sensor. Reseat the tubing in the air detector, making certain it is firmly seated. Finally, press reprime. The system will resume infusion when the repriming process is complete. A high pressure alarm will sound if the patient line is blocked, the recirculation line is blocked, the infusion site is not well placed, the catheter bore size is too small, or the pressure limit setting is too low. In this situation, you should inspect the patient and recirculation lines to make sure the flow path is not blocked. Check to see that the catheter is not too small or too long. Ensure all tubing between the Belmont Rapid Infuser and the patient's catheter is able to support the infusion rate selected. A heating fault will most often occur if the disposable set windows or infrared probes are wet, dirty, or blocked. After cleaning and drying the surfaces, press retry to continue. Hardware alarms include heater power read back fault and air detector fault. In these cases, power down and press retry to try again. If error persists, the machine will need servicing. Thank you for watching today, and please keep in mind that detailed instructions can be found in the Belmont Rapid Infusers Operator's Manual as well as the Quick Reference Guide. Belmont Instrument Corporation is a small, high-tech company that has been making revolutionary medical devices for over 25 years. All our products are designed, built, and tested in the USA at our company headquarters in Billerica, Massachusetts. Please call our headquarters at 978-663-0212 if you have any questions or if we can help you further. Hello, I'm Lisa Fornicoya with Belmont Instrument Corporation. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up the Buddy Fluid Warmer. The Buddy is a safe and effective near patient dry heat fluid warmer with an ingenious disposable set. It's capable of warming fluids to normothermia at flow rates up to 6 liters per hour or 100 ml per minute. The Buddy consists of three main components. The power module, the miniature heater unit, and the disposable set. Attach the power module to an IV pole using the screw clamp on the back. The power button, mute button, display panel, and heater unit holder are located on the front of the power module. The display panel clearly shows the fluid temperature, alarm, and status messages. Attach the heating unit to the power module by aligning the arrow with a dot and pushing until it snaps into place. The tiny heater unit uses clean, dry heating that is extremely responsive. It has multiple heating and sensing zones to warm fluids from 20 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius at flow rates up to 100 milliliters per minute. Each disposable is packaged individually in a sterile pouch and is intended for single use only. It does not contain latex or DEHP plasticizer. Line up the red arrow on the disposable unit with the red arrow on the heater unit. 
and snap the disposable into place. Close the latch on the heating unit. It should close completely without using force. Turn the power on. Flush the disposable with the fluid and tap, making sure you have removed all air. Connect the patient line. For optimal performance, the buddy should be placed as close to the patient's catheter as possible and infusion rate should not exceed 6 liters per hour. Secure the heating unit on top of the patient using the sheet clamps. The buddy can be used to administer blood, blood products, and intravenous solutions. You will see the temperature displayed on the panel and the word heating. The buddy will vent air from crystalloid solutions during operation. When the procedure is complete, the heating unit can be detached from the power module and travel with the patient if desired. The heating unit can be stored in the pocket on the front of the power module. Hold the power button for one second to place the unit into standby. Let's take a closer look at a few of the features of the disposable. First, the pressure regulating valve. When excessive pressure is applied to the IV line, the pressure regulating valve absorbs the excessive pressure with no action needed by the operator. The venting membrane is a wonderfully ingenious piece of technology. It automatically removes outgassed air from the fluid line. As the fluid enters the membrane, the fluid pathway bifurcates into two parallel paths over a hollow frame. The inner layer is constructed of a microporous membrane that allows outgassed air to escape to the atmosphere. The outer layer is made of a thin medical grade polymer film. The fluids are forced to the outside of the frame to facilitate contact with the heating plates during warming. The disposable also incorporates a miniature valve which prevents air entrainment. The anti-entrainment valve uses proprietary technology to stop flow in the event the entire disposable becomes filled with air. Finally, a one-way valve prevents backflow from the patient. The heater unit has several heating and sensing zones controlled by tiny microprocessors. It will alert the user when there is no or very low flow, such as when a fluid bag is empty. It will sound an audible alarm when it senses air in the line. Pressure infusers are associated with death from accidental air embolus and should not be used with a buddy fluid warmer. The buddy fluid warmer is very easy to set up and operate. The many safety features built into the disposable require virtually no operator involvement. Thank you for watching today. And remember that detailed instructions can be found in the Belmont Buddy Fluid Warmer Operator's Manual and Quick Reference Guide. Belmont Instrument Corporation is a small, high-tech company that has been making revolutionary medical devices for over 25 years. All our products are designed, built, and tested in the USA at our company headquarters in Billerica, Massachusetts. Please call our headquarters at 978-663-0212 if you have any questions or if we can help you further.